Verse 12. All right, now, this is interesting. Notice this is similar to what we read earlier. Him that overcometh. If you overcome, that's a tribulation thing, right? So we can see tribulation application here. Will I make a pillar in the temple of my God? If you overcome really well, God's going to give you a pillar in God's temple. And he shall go no more out, so you won't be able to, uh, so you won't be kicked out over here. So there's some property up in heaven where it has your name. Let's keep reading. And I will write upon him the name of my God. So notice that you're given a pillar and there's uh, an engraving on it. And it's the name of God's name and the name of the city of my God. It's engraved on you, which is New Jerusalem. So that's what we figured out now. New Jerusalem is that new city that God has prepared, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. One day that new Jerusalem property that God's preparing is going to come down out of heaven and land here on earth. And I will write upon him my new name. And you're going to get a new name there. Now, notice this was very similar with what God promised at the previous chapter that we read, right? You remember that one? If we look at Revelation chapter 2, and then you might remember what God mentioned at verse 17, right? Revelation 2, 17. It's similar about a new name written in heaven. Now, if you might recall, what did I tell you before about this? I told you that what it could be referring to is that this new name that is written down in heaven is referring to you and your house. What you're going to find out, I kind of indicated last time, but now I'm going to explain it a little more here. This one is you actually, you understand. What you're going to find out, a lot of times the house up in heaven is identified with you. And the new name is identified with you. They're all simultaneous together. You're going to notice that. That's why what's very interesting is that you're going to see any time that it mentions about the mansion or the house up in heaven, it's assimilated with the person. You might say, why is that? You two are more closely entwined than you think. That's why it makes so much more sense. Some Christians believe that depending how well you do in your works for the Lord, you can use these rewards that you have to build up your house. So I'm not sure if that much is true. But I do know this, is that all of this is identified with you. So I'm going to show you a few passages. First of all, let's look back at 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Now, I don't know if you remember what I mentioned here at 1 Peter. Remember I mentioned that concerning about this new name, what it could be referring to is that because you're a priest of God, and because you're a priest of God, God engraved a new name on you like he did with the priest at the Levitical law, right? And we notice that when he engraves this new name, it's engraved upon the house that you're building. So this priesthood and this house building with the new name, they're all simultaneous together. So let's look at 1 Peter again. Let's refresh your memory, shall we? 1 Peter chapter 2, chapter 2. Let's look at verse 4. To whom coming, see, if Jesus comes, and remember Revelation 3, behold, I come quickly. So make sure you have that new name written upon your house. This is all, this is all talking about the same thing here at 1 Peter then. So when he comes, to whom coming, 1 Peter 2, 4, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as what? Lively stones. So you're identified with the stone. Do you remember Revelation 2 where God talks about, I'll write him a new name and give him a white stone? And that was the priest who bore that? Remember I told you that? This white stone then could be referring to this, this house. Let's keep reading. Lively stones are what? Built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. See, they're all identified together. You see that? Told you so. That's really interesting. So what we see right here then is that if you overcome and do well, God can give you, like he mentioned a Revelation 2, a new name and this white stone. 
and then we saw Revelation chapter 3, I'll give him a pillar in the temple of my God, which is New Jerusalem. So what's going on is, is that it seems like that God is putting these white stones together of your new name so that you can build yourself your house. Now look at John chapter 14. You'll notice right here, God is building. It's in a building process. It's not like it's completed and done. It's in a building process here. Let's look at John chapter 14, verse 2. Now notice that this house building is all connected with Jesus' coming. We see that over and over again. Behold, I come quickly. That's why I'm going to write a new name if you overcome and put in the pillar of the temple of my God, your home. This is all referring to the same thing. Notice John 14 gives that kind of same idea too when Jesus comes. He's preparing the house. Verse 2, in my father's house are many what? Mansions. Now why would Jesus say in his father's house are mansions, not rooms? The New International Version, the modern version says rooms. Why? Because it doesn't make sense that you can put a mansion in a house. Uh -huh. Well, all things are possible with God. Hey, that must be some big house then That's that you can put your, squeeze your mansion in there. Because remember, God says, in the temple of my God. So he's referring to right here that God's temple, which is New Jerusalem, remember? So here's New Jerusalem which is God's temple. And in this are what? Mansions. See that? There are mansions over here. So, uh, it's like no room. <laughs> so you'll notice right here that God, he puts mansions in his house in New Jerusalem. This is going to be some big thing, New Jerusalem, when you see it. It's going to be fascinating. Okay. Let's keep reading here. In my father's house, singular, right? New Jerusalem, God's temple, are many mansions. Those stones where he can put a pillar and a new name here. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to what? Prepare a place for you. See, it's in a building process. It's in a preparation process. Right now, it's under construction. And all of that depends on how well you overcome, how you live your life well for Jesus Christ. And then your house can be built up even more and more. Let's keep reading. And if I go and prepare a place for you, see, once this is prepared, I will what? Come again and receive you unto myself. See, he's coming. That's why Jesus warned you. Behold, I come quickly. So make sure that you hold fast to your crown and overcome so that what? I can put the new name and this house on in construction. See that? That's why you better have this prepared. All right, let's return. Let's return to our main text. Let's look at Revelation chapter 3. Now, what I can see here is this, is that there's going to be two possible interpretations. But I don't know how the second interpretation is going to work. Remember, there are two applications, right? Spiritual and doctrinal, yes? Okay. So here's uh, one of the areas that I'm not really sure about. So if we can see a lot about spiritual application here for a Christian, correct? A lot of this seems to connect right here for Christians. Not only that, what you're going to find out is that New Jerusalem, the Bible says in the book of Galatians, that is referring to the bride of Christ, Revelation chapter 21. If you look at Galatians chapter, I think it's 3 from my memory, it's New Jerusalem is the mother of us Christians. So this is a particularly a Christian thing. This is not a tribulation application. It seems more like a Christian application. So then the spiritual application, which is going to be toward Christians, is that if you overcome, then you can put, then God can put the new name in the house and all of this working is going to de depend on how well you serve him. Then what about the tribulation application, the doctrinal application? 
The doctrinal application then is this, is that if we're going to apply this to tribulation, because there's a lot of tribulation application here. The phrase overcome, right? Overcome, overcome, overcome. That's a tribulation thing which we saw in Revelation 2 and 3. But we can make that phrase overcome a Christian application. Why? Because remember what I taught you when we covered the book of Ephesus concerning about him that overcometh. If you look at 1 John chapter 5, the one who overcomes are those who simply believe on Jesus Christ. Not doing works to overcome, but those who believe on Jesus Christ. And you already overcome. So I explained around it by using 1 John chapter 5. But I also showed you that that overcoming thing is also a tribulation application on works because we compared that with Revelation chapter 21 and chapter 22. It has to do an entrance to God's holy city. And remember, this is God's holy city right here. An entrance to God's holy city if they kept his commandments at Revelation 22 and 21. So then, what I'm thinking is this, is that, okay, I already told you the Christian side for this, right? So then the tribulation side for this, a doctrinal application, is that if they continue in their works to overcome for the Lord in their salvation, then what's going to happen is it seems like they might have some sort of name engraved in New Jerusalem. That's why Revelation 22 says, Blessed are they that do His commandments that they might have right to enter into the city. So they might have their name engraved there and they might even have a place over there. That's possible. But then, if you're going to say that the tribulation saints, they have a place over there, this seems to contradict the teaching that New Jerusalem is reserved for Christians. See? How do we know it's reserved for Christians? Because Revelation 21 told you it's referring to the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ is the Christian church. It's not the tribulation saints. If you read Ephesians chapter 5, the bride of Christ is the church. That's what you're going to find out right here. So then in this passage, basically, I'm giving you a dilemma that you can research for yourself. In Revelation and every verse-by-verse -verse Bible study I go to, you're not going to find answers to everything. You're always going to remember that. If I give, gave an answer for everything, that I'm God. I do not have the perfect knowledge of God. So I am interested to hear different people's opinions concerning this. But there is one irrefutable factor that I know. One irrefutable factor is this. New Jerusalem is something Christian. There is absolutely no doubt about that. And not only that, there is something Christian about Christians' works depending upon their house building right here. But remember this. Christians, if they fail in their works, they never lose their salvation. They cannot go to hell. So they can lose their rewards, and it seems like they might lose their house, it seems like, because their works depend upon their building. But this doesn't mean that they lose their salvation at all. Why is that, Pastor? Because of so many verses I showed you of Christians who failed in their works, yet they're going to heaven after they die. Um, I've given so many different teachings on that, but you can watch those videos. I've given you video after video about those things. Uh, watch OSAS if you're interested. If you doubt me, watch OSAS. Uh, my teaching, Once Saved, Always Saved, it's a discipleship class, and I've given too many verses on that. All right, but we saw a lot of interesting things, didn't we, on this verse? On this verse alone, we saw so many interesting things of double application. I'm telling you so many times, do you now see the importance of double application? Having a tribulation application and a church age application? If you have these two things, then you can see how all of these verses can fit on one side or the other. If you don't do that, double application, you're going to have a mess. And you're going to have a lot more unanswered questions I'm giving you right now. Because everything that I'm covering right here will have a Christian side and a tribulation side. Why? Because that's how the verses are made. Verses are made not just for one application, but for double. And I've given you so many examples of that. For example, let's say that we take only one application for the book of Psalms, where David was crying out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's not going to make sense when you read that whole chapter that you only put it as David. Why? Because it talks about a lot of things where it's a different application to Jesus Christ. They cast my garments about it and they tore up my vesture. 
That's not David. That's referring to Jesus Christ. But if you make it only one application to Jesus, that whole chapter of Psalms is not going to make sense either. Because that chapter mentions about because I've sinned against you, forgive me. Don't remember my sins and iniquities. Well, that can't be Jesus Christ. That's referring to David. See, when you cover prophecy, like the book of Psalms, do you see the importance of having two applications? Now, I already read from Revelation 2 and 3. Do you see why two applications were that important for Revelation 2 and 3? You should have saw that by now, when I always gave a tribulation side and a Christian side. It filled out every other gap over there. If you don't do that, there's going to be passages that do not make sense. Does not make sense. All right, now let's return to Revelation chapter 3, verse 13. All right, what do you think I'm going to say? Y'all got ears? All right. He that hath an ear, if y'all got ears, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right, so if you all have ears, you got to listen to the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And I think you've learned a lot what the Holy Spirit spoke to you about this, right? All right. It's a good thing we covered this verse. Now you see the importance of what you can lose, what you got to prepare for when Jesus comes soon. We don't want to see homeless, naked, poor bums <laughs> for the whole millennium. <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want that. 